Good morning. It's a good morning. Hello, Don Hunters. This ball of energy here. Who's <laughs> I just asked him if it's gonna fall or not. Like he said, it should be fine. <laughs> you can tell who got up early to get prepared to leave the dock. And I also found my five-year-old swimsuit that I'm still fitting in. Nice cherries. <laughs> we are leaving Langkawi and going to an island. We're not gonna tell you what it is, but I was there one time. And it's kind of like the place with Star Wars where everybody looks different. We fit right in. That's Drives make it really a weird sound and when we tried to anchor, then we had the mooring ball, I can't go in reverse sometimes or forward. Let's see if it gets louder we open the engine room. Well, what do you think this can be out of 50 things? I, I don't know. They had the drives off, checked everything. We're going to have to uh, go on one engine. I don't want a chance messing something up. Finally, we have two engines, <laughs> but they should both be working. Hold on up there. If we hit something, you're going to be over the front. What are you screaming there? <laughs> I can't hear you. You guys are always commenting about a harness and a life jacket. And she's out there pretending like she's on Titanic. Like if we hit a whale or a container, we'd be practicing man overboard procedures again. Which by the way, many comments said we should practice. We practice all the time because Yana keeps dropping bumpers in the water. And we have to go around and rescue them. about our old boat is we had two huge freaking horns and whatever I wanted to like get someone's attention I just blow the horn a little bit <laughs> I feel so small with the nature mountains. I don't even know, can you call those mountains? But we definitely have to take a snorkel or a dive gear and go explore. Successfully anchored. Now it's time to have some fun. We found this amazing spot on the way in. I wanted to go there three days ago. We're going to go now and finally try this gear that we have. <laughs> this is our first time snorkeling, hopefully. <laughs> Everything always goes wrong and we never get to the water. So hopefully this time, this is gonna be the one. I have my fish skins on already. <laughs> Last time we went this far, our dinghy got beached and totally flooded and we had to spend the whole night on the island. That was insane. And what are we doing again? And now we're trying this with electric. So you gotta check out that episode where we had to spend the night. That's really why we ended up with a dinghy like this.
It's a freaking rock there the size of this dinghy. I guess I better keep an eye on it. Guys, this is insane. There is a, literally a huge rock sticking out in the water. Just right here in the middle of the ocean. You really need to know your way here or keep your eyes open. Wow, one more. How many are there hiding here? That's insane. I don't think we're going to be able to stop here. There's rocks all over and I really don't want to test the bottom of our dinghy just yet. I'd like to use it a little bit. Come on, you chicken shit. We got the aluminum dinghy for this. This is why I'm fixing shit day and night. It's always going to be fine. Did we just hit the bottom? We go like from 10 feet to like zero feet. I don't have a good feeling about this. Motor's up and tide's going out, but I guess we've committed. <laughs> so gondola man starts singing like Italy. I'm flying the drone and I literally see us hitting the rocks on the screen. <laughs> This is so slippery here, it's insane. Guys, this is so pretty here on this island. There are so many little crabs running around and all kinds of little tiny creatures that are just lurking around, other than me. <laughs> right behind me is how high the tide goes, which makes me worry because how are we gonna get our dinghy out of here? Do you think we can get out of here? This is like my own private island right here. Can you ask for more? No. We gotta go. You gotta help me off of here. We already hung up. I'm supposed to enjoy my life on an island if everything, every time is always broken. Well, it's not broken just yet, <laughs> but who is pulling the dinghy? Just like in Bahamas, I guess I have to get us out. Decided that the heavier of the two of us has to get out and pull, and I think that Yana won the bet. It's always rewarding when you like design something and work on it. You go through four or five dinghies and then finally you perfect it and you get out here and you hit your first rock really hard and you dent the dinghy and you're like, wow, I didn't hear. All I heard was, oh shit. I'm super happy with the aluminum dinghy. Wow, look at the supply boat. It was like about ready to sink. I think the only thing I don't see there are goats. They have mattresses and trees and fertilizer and gas bottles. I guess everything but animals. Maybe there's animals inside. Guys, 
guys, I want to show you something really cool. There is a boat at our anchorage that just arrived this morning and we took a dinghy <laughs> to talk to the guy because it's something that you have to see. I'm gonna fly the drone and show you this. This guy with his wife is living on this boat for more than 20 years at this point. And you can see the amazing flowers that are <laughs> literally wrapped around his uh, radar post and his wind generator. We went there on the boat and asked him, how does he keep his flowers alive? Because the conditions when you live on the boat are so harsh and plus when you sail, the wind is affecting flowers to the point where you almost cannot grow anything on the boat. And he said that, Depending on where they are right now in the world, <laughs> he literally said that, they wrap a cheesecloth around the plants every time they sail. So his wife is who takes care of the plants and she's been having plants on the boats like that for a very long time. And I have never seen anything like this before in my life. Hey, <laughs> quick, get a bucket. <laughs> I use their chicken. <laughs> Wait, get, get ready. Now we know the secret, day old chicken. Our first catch after calamari. Who needs a grocery store? You know, it makes scaling this fish the best. We're using your new scuba knife. Hey. <laughs> Filet knife. I didn't recognize it. Well, that means you're, you're not diving enough. On the last live stream, we were asked a very good question. Can I go cruising if I don't eat fish? So the person was assuming that all we eat here is fish. Sorry to tell you guys, you eat fish very seldom when you either buy it or catch it. And the second one happens like once a year for us. I think we use more water cleaning this fish than Yana washing her hair. sear it on each side and then cook it. Can see we catch so many fish, I'm an expert. We have this beautiful bar left from the previous order. Neither do I or William, nor William drinks. <laughs> so I might drink today to celebrate this fish. How about... <sighs> it smells amazing though. Come on guys, have a drink with me. Oh wait. I'm down. I'm gonna celebrate your fish. Cheers, guys. Excellent. This is so good. Good job. It's going one way and the mooring ball is going the other way and the wind's going the opposite way. It's hitting on the bottom of the boat and there's not much I guess we can do about it. So is it uh, dangerous? No, we're just not going to sleep very well <laughs> if it doesn't stop. This happens a lot in here because there's so much current coming through that the current fights the wind and I haven't figured out what to do. If you guys have an idea how to keep mooring balls from smacking into your catamaran, please let me know. I think it stopped banging, but it's still kind of concerning. Like when it hits, it's such a hard hit and the sound is really loud. I thought we were hitting the bottom actually. Boot life! We're here in Peepee Island and we found an authentic market with all kinds of amazing strange, strange foods. local food. <laughs> We're talking the same word. So I'm going to take the camera and find something to surprise Yana with. And I'm going to take a camera and find something really nasty for William to try. Fine, I'm gonna find something nasty too. <laughs> yeah, we've realized that we are not trying as many things since we came here because of 
um, bathroom time. <laughs> if you're not gonna eat something that I bring to you and vice versa, then you or I owe a desire. For you guys out there, desire means that you owe something big time to the other person. <laughs> Let's go. I need money. We come up with an idea and then guess what? That should do it. You can take the rest. Money back. A lot of this stuff looks like I should be getting it and then eating it before I meet Yana. I think somewhere it says that you could taste first to make sure that it's safe for your wife. Let's go quickly walk the whole market to know what exactly is the most interesting. Here you are. Hey. Found something yet? <laughs> or you already bought something? We decided it was best to try it first and make sure it was safe for you. <laughs> oh, look at the cakes. That's cool. I always look at those things in those leaves and they look very interesting because they don't show what's inside. So I think that would be pretty cool for William to try. Let's go. You can't get any better than this. And look at how fresh this is. So I'm going for sausage on a stick. I'm not looking, I'm not looking, I'm not looking, I'm not looking. <laughs> While I'm waiting for William, you know how much this was? Five baht. Five baht is 14 cents for what I bought with him. 14 cents. And the prices here are crazy. Now keep your eyes closed. Okay. I didn't know what happened. Can ready? I speed it up? No. Oh my god, that's the scariest thing ever. Ready? Open wide. Okay, it's not sweet. It tastes like something in, in breadcrumbs. Can't quite say if it's fish or chicken. It's actually pretty good. You bought me a chicken? A special chicken breast. That's very good, actually. This guy is just so nice. I've seen those things for sale for so long here, and I was always wondering what they are. So you're about to tell me. <laughs> Close your eyes, too. I'm gonna give it to you to smell. Smells like farm. <laughs> You're up for something. That's what it looks like. I have goosebumps. <laughs> uh, tastes like something they probably brought over from India to Asia back in the days of spices. Can I open my eyes yet? Oh, it's kind of like maybe fig. It's kind of sweet. No, it's sweet. I think it's candy banana. I think it's a banana that they let sit for a long time and add some gelatin to it. Guys, he's not giving you any input. I'm afraid I have to try it. It's like a gelatinized substance with some crumbs inside or blended something. It tastes like something with kind of some crumbs inside. <laughs> That's a lot more information that I gave you. I don't see our dinghy, but the looks of it, guys, our boat is not where it was. So now we're gonna go and look through the whole beach and see, maybe we don't see it in the dark, but it's not there. We tied our dinghy to a swimming buoy and left it to go to eat. And the tide here shifts like crazy. And we came back now and there is no dinghy. This is crazy. You know what? Maybe that's that's yes. it right there. In true Dawn Hunters fashion, we came out from the town and we went right instead of left. And Yana's like, someone stole our dinghy. I thought they did with a boat. Happy dinghy dance. Are you dancing too? <laughs> The tide went down like by eight feet. Our dinghy is officially on the beach. We wanted to test our dinghy, not quite this way. We're gonna wait three hours somewhere and hope the water comes back. Found alive. You know, you're supposed to kiss the land when you come ashore. In our case, it's the other way around. Good thing you got bumpers. You never know what's gonna hit us out here. Maybe a Jeep, a truck. 
in our boat. Looks like dawn hunters are going to be sleeping on the beach tonight. Let's go have a party! <laughs> about the fact that we might have to sleep on the beach again. Why this happens to us all the time? Planning. Planning. Or if we take dessert in every restaurant <laughs> by about 5 a.m. when the tide comes up, we can just have somebody wheel us out there. <laughs> tide shifting is somewhere in the islands, but the problem is this island has an extreme long, long, shallow entry. So four foot here means you have about maybe 200 meters out before the water is there. So now we have to wait until the water comes back. Should be four hours. I hope for the better one. I hope maybe it's gonna be maybe two hours. <laughs> Strawberry Thai pancake. What is it? Doesn't look like pancake. Looks like a piece of dough with strawberries. Smells pretty good. It's like a fried pancake. Right? Thank you. Wow, so pretty. And not even stone. I'm impressed. What's going on here? And we're floating. Nothing like a floating dinghy to make the night complete. <laughs> Time is 9.49. I'm staying ashore. <laughs> Time to go home. That was a fun day. Let's go for a coffee for an hour. Nine hours later, we might be out of here. I don't know. We have arrived 10 o'clock. Not so bad, but I've learned one thing. Don't just check the tide table. Check your depth going in so you know what's going to happen if you need to get out. <laughs> <laughs> and guess who is always blamed?